Long Haul Larry, Big Blue here. Uh, we're starting our day off here. It is, let's see, January, that was yesterday, January 26th. <clears throat> oh, look at that, they only got, oh man, they don't give out a joke for Sundays. <laughs> they just got the one for, it says 26th and 27th. But here's our bad uh, dad joke for the day. What did the baby corn say to the mama corn? Where's popcorn? Oh, that one needs a... That one's a pretty good one. I like that one. <laughs> but um, I'm actually here in Lower City, Ohio. And like I said in the last video, <clears throat> um, the... The filters on this truck have never changed. Um, I had this truck just over six months. Been chasing a lot of different things, you know, with the motor, the brakes, you know, doing major things to keep this truck rolling, keep it making money. And I knew the filters were getting bad and everything else. Um, I just haven't had a chance. I just really haven't messed with it. It's been on a back burner. But now that it's getting really cold and everything, I have to run this truck with the air blowing full blast just to try to keep it somewhat warm in here and everything. And I'll just show you. I got the, the defroster on high and I'll just put that piece of paper in there. It doesn't even move. It doesn't really even blow. There's just a little tiny bit of air that comes out of there. There's just really nothing that happens there. Um, I can hear the fan motor running. I got it all the way on high. I can hear the fan running and everything. It's it's running real good and everything. So I know it's gonna be the filters. So I have picked up all the different filters. Um, this one here, I have two of them. And these are the part numbers for these filters from Packar. It's uh, PX1987001. This is, this is uh, there's two of these. There's actually one that goes into the dash and there's one that goes into the bunk heater. They're the same filter. So you'll need two of these. Um, this one here is actually goes outside and it's a secondary, it's like a pre-filter. Um, this one here is PF37-1018. Need one of those. And then this here is the, the last filter. This is for recirculation. Um, in your dash, you could choose either to get air from the outside or you can choose to recirculate the air inside the truck. We're gonna replace all these. And this one is a recirculation filter. And I can tell you right now, these are a booger. But, um, so they're not changed very much. <clears throat> they're real easy to, they're not real easy to get to. How do I wanna say this? There's, they're a booger to get in and out, basically to say. But the part number on this one is PW2084001. So we're gonna change all these filters out and I'll show you guys how, where they go and what everything does and then we'll check it out and see if it blows any better. All right, guys, the first filters that we're gonna change are outside on the engine. So we're gonna pop up the hood. These are real easy to get to. I'll get the new filters. I'll be back. All right, we got our new filters. Right here they are. It's really easy, it's right here. And basically all you, get, all you do is there's this little tab right on here. And all you do is just slide that back and it comes right off. We'll put that to the side. And then right here your two filters are. There's the main one and then there's the pre one that's down on the bottom. They're really easy. This is just a drain for water and moisture. It gets up on top of here for it to drain out. You can actually just take this, pull this off, and you just grab these and yank them out. Real simple. And you can see, here I'll tear this. Look at how bad that is. So we'll take these out. All right, here's our new ones. Open them up. Let's 
and they just go back in the same way real easy guys but you can see right here it has on here airflow it has an arrow pointing up so the air is going to go up it that way and you can see right on the filters they have airflow and the arrow is pointing that way so that's why you put them back in very simple we just slide it in there Thing with this one slide it in there <clears throat> we just push this on here like that line up the tabs snap it into place put on our little air drain thing or water drain thing there we go outside filters are changed now we got fresh clean air coming in here there's you know all these parking lots you can always do that too. These things get cluttered up with stuff being sucked in there. You just kind of squeeze that there and it opens that up. Kind of knock any garbage out of there comes in there. But uh, we're in dirt parking lots all the time and everything else. A lot of dust gets up in here. That's what keeps the dust from trying to you know get up into the truck. Um, this will also help with, uh, with the motor so that the motor doesn't burn out. It helps with the AC unit and everything else in the, in the summertime. So, you guys should be changing these quite often. Um, you just gotta keep an eye on them. I usually do them twice a year. I usually do them about every six months. I try to change these filters out. And I can tell you right now, that small one hasn't been changed out in a long time. So, so now we'll do the inside ones. Since we got the hood up, and I'm, he and I'm heading into real cold temperature, I was saying, you know, this motor is only three weeks since it's rebuilt. Um, I have not drained the water separator. Um, I have not drained this at all. I have not really checked it. And um, I don't know. My bad. But it, it hasn't been no problems or anything. But basically, I'm going to be hold, coming into some cold temperatures. So we're just going to give it a little drain. So you just open the valve up in the bottom. Just twist it. And there she goes. There was a little tiny, tiny bit. But you can see that is that's good clean diesel. There was a little bit of some residue in the bottom of there. And you just can twist it, close it back up. Just want to make sure we don't have any water in there. And it's good. The main filter up there. I replaced that about, I want to say about four months ago. Uh, that'll be good till spring. The way that you could check that actually is right here. It's this little thing right here. You press the end of it, and as that thing sucks, it gets plugged up. This little thing will suck out, suck out, and if you press that, it'll go bunk, and it'll spring back and release it. I just pressed it, it didn't do anything, so that filter's okay. We'll close the hood up. Now we'll go and do the insert and the recirculation one next. All right, guys, let's get inside here and change out this recirculation filter. It's pretty simple. Um, it's really a pain in the butt, though. Whoever designed this little thing, man, I'd like to find them. <laughs> but basically, all you gotta do is pull off this bottom kick panel. Um, you can just stick your fingers in there. It's just held on there. Just little press tabs and just kind of wiggle it. Pull on it. There we go. Set that aside. And then here's the thing. Now, there is another video on YouTube about doing this, and I was watching it, and the guy was saying, you gotta pull this grab bar off, you know, you gotta pull all the bolts off, you gotta pull the sidekick panel off, everything. You gotta get all this off to get to it. You do not have to. This is the main reason why I'm putting this video out. All you need to do, because you need to get this glove box out. 
There's four screws inside this glove box that hold it on. And then there's two down on the bottom. One's right here, and the other one's right behind this kick plate. And that's why he's saying you need to get this off. I'm gonna show you this. Just pull this little rubber off, that to the side. And then this will just give enough, you can pull this little plate back and move it there. And right there is your screw. You don't need to do it. You don't need to take all this apart. So we'll just take a Phillips screwdriver. And there we go. We just put that screw there. I'm using my Dewalt. You don't have to have one of these. You can just use a screwdriver, but this makes it faster. And then there's one here, 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 and over here. There we go. Now the glove box, oh, I took out the wrong screw. <laughs> I still got this screw here. Oops. That's for that that kick panel down here. There we go. Now we're good. So now the whole glove box is kind of wiggle it, twist it, and it comes right out. All right. Um, inside here, this is your heater core. Um, when you have the heat on and everything, the, the coolant will go through. There's like a little metal heater core that's inside here and the air blows through there. That's how you get your heat. That's in here. Your AC is over here. There's an AC one right there. This is your fan. So if you ever, you know, the fan ever goes out, right here it is, not hard to get out. First, we'll need to disconnect this power wire. Just like so, you just squeeze that little rubber, that little, red tab there and just squeeze that and I use the screwdriver and just get behind there and pry with it so I'm not pulling on the wires real hard and pulling the wires out. We'll tuck that wire back. Then you're gonna need a little star bit. Um, what size is this? This is a T20 star bit. And there's three screws. There's this one, this one, and one down on the bottom. I'm gonna tell you right now, when I picked up this pre, this uh, recirculation filter, the Kenworth dealer's like, oh, you're doing the recirculation one? And I says, yeah. He goes, you know where that is, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he, he's like, oh. And I said, yeah, it's a pain in the butt. He started laughing. He's like, yeah, those things are horrible. And I told him, I said, whoever designed that thing needs a swift kick. <laughs> so, let's lock my doors. Um, okay, so now you got this motor loose. You can see it's loose here. What you have to do is just pull on it a little bit and you twist it. Just like so. Get caught on this wire and wiggle it out. Right there's your motor. That's your blower for your heat, AC, everything. Right there it is. So now, let's see here. So now, if you look up inside there, see there's, you can actually see the filter that goes outside that I just installed. Um, now there's a louver in here, and this is what's gonna be really hard to see. But there's a louver right here. And what this louver does is when you have it on the outside air, then it's like this right here, and it pulls air from outside. But then when you hit your recirculation button, this little louver will come down, this door will come down and close off the outside, and then it sucks in through the dash here, through a filter that's back there, and that filter is what we're gonna change. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to video changing a filter. Um, and I'm gonna show you where the filter is, but what it is is there's a, there's a thing on the backside, and you have to stick your hand up through here and go back here to get to the filter. And me with my big old ape hands here, and big old monkey paws, it's really hard to get back in there and it's really difficult to get it back in. It's a lot of wiggling. It's kind of curved on the backside of here 
and then there's it's about that thick and then there's plastic on the other side like little holders it is the worst design thing I've, ever, I've seen in a while it's so bad and it's no wonder why nobody ever changes them. I can tell you right now nobody's ever changed this one so I'm gonna try to pull it out what I'm gonna do too is I'll show you it to you here hang on a second all right so I turned the key on now and the AC, you know the heat is on and everything but you're not gonna hear because the motor's disconnected but if you reach up in here and I hit the recirculation button you're gonna see that little louver door come down see it now up behind there you can see all these holes and everything there is actually a filter behind there and that's what we're gonna pull out it's easy to get out hard to get back in so I'll see if I can just reach up okay I can feel it with my fingers it's just it's back behind there and I'm just wiggling it and I'm just pulling on it try to get it out of there without making a total mess and there you go I mean you can see this thing it's just so bad this thing has never been changed that's why there's no air going through there it's just so bad so we're gonna put this on the side it's just a little piece of filter and so what you have to do is basically just tuck this up back to here and you got to try to slide it in there it's all by feel it's the worst and you just got to sit here and work it in there now I'm gonna see here and I'm gonna try to hold it I have it started and all you gotta do is just wiggle I don't know if you can see that or not and you just gotta wiggle and push it all right guys I am almost complete here I've actually found out a way to do this I taken a little tiny screwdriver like this and we just sit there very slowly put it in these little honeycomb holes and just kind of press that filter over it's really a pain in the butt well there we go guys we got our new filter all up in there we got our slit all in there it's just a real big pain in the butt guys but it can be done just takes a little time like I said the, the cool little trick that I found was I could get it in by just reaching my hand around and wiggling and stuff. I could get it around but here. But on the back side, about half to three quarters away across here, there is another piece of plastic that goes on the outside of it and it gets caught on there. But once you get it past there, I just use this little screwdriver and I just stick it in those little honeycomb holes and then just sit there and just pick at it and just pull it, pull it, pull it. It's just millimeter by millimeter, but you can get it pulled in there and there you go. So now we'll put this back together. All right, first up, we'll be putting our fan back in. Like I said, you gotta turn it. Because this thing here has to get by this pipe. So you just twist there and then put it in there. Line it up, there you go. Put our skews back in there. There we go. Got our fan back in, hook up our wires. I got the key on so this fan's gonna fire up. There she goes. Just turn it off. All right, now we can just put our kick panel in. You know, what just do is let's line it up. And there's these little plastic tabs here to fit into that holes. Just put them in there. There's one down here, Push, snap those in, snap those in, there you go. There you go, there's a recirculation filter. That thing was just nasty, guys. It was just covered. Man, that's just nasty. Man. Look at that, that's never been changed. So now we got a good clean one. Now we can do the bunk. All right, guys, we got our last filter that we're gonna be putting in. This is gonna go in for the bunk heater back here. Got old Johnny over here helping me. He's assisting, I guess. So I'll just pull open the bed. Let 
This one's real simple. It's just right here. All you do is you just grab it, slide it up, just like so. And then take the new one. Airflow goes that way. So you look at their arrows. And slap her down in there. There we go. Now we got new filters. Well, there we go, guys. We got all three filters changed. So now let's test it out. Let's see how it blows now. So we'll turn the fan all the way up on high. <laughs> and we'll put our paper. Oh, you can see that? See how much more that thing blows? I mean, this paper was hardly even moving before. So now we actually got some heat flowing. There we go. That's why Johnny and his family all crowded up on a dash. They're like, finally some heat. Oh, we ain't got no feathers, you know. <laughs> So those those three filters cost um, about $100. Um, they were they were each they were about $30 a piece. Um, and then there's that smaller one. So one was 20 something, but but um, they cost they ended up costing right about $100 for those three filters. How often should you change them? I usually change them every six months. But you know if you got yourself you know two dogs with you and. And a cat and a gerbil or something. Well, then you're gonna have lots of hair, and you're probably gonna need to change it more often. But uh, especially the one back in the bunk and the recirculation one. The one outside that's just in the summertime. If you're in a lot of dry conditions, dusty, probably have to change that more often too. But now she's all blowing real good and everything. Uh, we got our fuel, our uh, water separator. We got that drained, so there's not gonna be any water in that to freeze up. We got our heat working real good. And when I stop and fuel, I'm gonna throw some additives in it because we're heading to Wisconsin and it's a bit chilly in Wisconsin. So pretty simple process. You guys saw, especially the, the filters outside, that's easy, that's nothing. Pop the thing off, slide a new one in, easy as can be. The one back in the bunk, same thing, easy as can be. The recirculation one, it's easy, but it's a real pain. So I hope this uh, helps some people out there or something. Uh, it's maybe got a Kenworth and didn't know where the filters were or how to change them and everything else. Um, pretty good for you to clean those out so you can get some nice clean air into your truck and not be breathing, you know, uh, mildew and dust and stuff into your truck and everything. Get some nice filters. But I am going to get rolling and get back to work to make some... There we go. So I'll catch you guys later. I hope that everyone out there is having themselves a great day, great night as they're watching this here video. If you are not, certainly can try it all over again tomorrow. Johnny and your family finally have some heat. You guys can be warm. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.